We all knew 2020 was gonna be good for Rod MG. And what other update than the one we received in January could live up to that promise? A huge dungeon polishing was initiated, general miscellaneous changes being the portal of Covertus changing sprite, tinctures and effusions being reintroduced for all stat types, and they also started dropping in purple bags instead of that. The pirate cave had the drop rate of its signature item, the pirate rum, increased. No support of alcoholism intended. Beach pirates and pirates also now dropped the pirate cave, which is what we call equality. The hive was balanced and made a guaranteed drop of the warrior bee. Magic woods was made a bit more common for mendentions. Dungeon design was improved, and now the water was just not water anymore. It was funky water, inflicting healing and hallucinating. Undead Lair Treasure Room boss, with some additional fixes. Lord Ruthven's fight was revised, and the old school helmet head entity was reintroduced. Toxic Sewers, you get a fix. Hearst Library, here's some change. Abyss of Demons, what a wreck. How about we fix you? We'll fix that, and it just keeps going. It just keeps going. That being said, polishing for this update was used in its finest way. Fixes across the board not just being made to enemy behavior and dungeon design, but also sprite changes, item drops, new enemies, and dialogue. Spelling errors and grammar rules, am I right? Overall, this was a great utilization of time and energy. Up here, and I'm going to be recapping some of the balance changes that happened this year. And oh boy, is there a lot of things we got to go over really fast. So, to start off, all tiered abilities and all tiers of the tiered abilities got completely changed. So, now instead of getting just two measly vit and two measly whiz, you actually get like 20 HP, 20 MP for tier 6, and 40 HP and 40 MP for tier 7. Next, heavy armors got increased def, leathers got increased def and dex, and robes got increased def and attack. Also, tier 13 weapons and tier 14 weapons received a buff across the board. And even some UTs got buffed, including Nil, Ritual Robe, and Breastplate. Nil got 3 extra death, but negative 2 more speed. Ritual Robe got 2 more death and 10 more MP. And Breastplate got an added 2 death. Another big change that ended up happening is Wine Cellar Tops not only dropped from Shatters, Orcs 2, and the Orcs 3 mini bosses. Tier 13 weapons and tier 14 armors got their drop rates buffed. Lost Halls, Nest, and Abandoned Mineshaft no longer guarantee pots. The dungeon cap was reduced from 85 players to 65 players. And lastly, there were 50 other UTs that had their drop rates buffed, but I'm not going to even try and name all of them, so I'll just show a list. Hello guys, Hyperion here. What a crazy year it has been for Realm of the Mad God. We got our 16th class, the Bard. The Bard is a bow class which utilizes a loot to inspire players in combat. It wears a robe instead of leather garments for armor. Quite a peculiar combination. It is also the perfect balance of offense, defense, and support. It's not really a jack of all trades, it's even better. I could say it's almost the master of all. The Bard can support ally players by inspiring. This buff increases the range of affected players by 25%. This allows for everyone to hit tough opponents further away and have an easier time dealing damage. That's not the only support this class gives. With tiered loots, the Bard can increase the defense of everyone near it too. So not only does everyone have more range, they have more survivability. The playstyle of this class can be anything you want, granted you have the items for it. There is a great variety of untiered loots you can get. You can become a rusher, a tank, a damage dealer, or even be of support in a way that's unique to the Bard. Using the Pharaoh's Requiem loot, you can weaken bosses so they deal less damage. The versatility this class has to offer makes it a great choice to take on the enemies in the realm. And if you're lucky and have these four items, guys, Seb Chief here. It was so crazy when Decker released the Unity um, teaser trailer like eight months ago. Everyone was going hella crazy, especially me. Seeing Unity compared to Flash was actually crazy, the differences. Of course, as expected, when the Exalt open beta came out, it was quite buggy. But Decker did a really good job at patching everything. And because of the transfer to Exalt, they're able to do a lot more than they were on Flash. Like for example, just to name a few things, they started bringing out content which is meant to be exclusive for Unity because of um, some visual effects. Like for example, Oryx Free. Because of the limited amount of developers they said they had, they decided to put all of their effort into creating content for Unity instead of Flash. So they continuously pushed out updates and kept polishing the game ever since. One of the reasons they released an open beta for Unity is because they wanted a smooth transition for Flash. A lot of people were used to playing um, on Flash. If you've seen my streams, then you saw me playing Flash until the very end, until we were forced off it. Also, some people have problems playing in the Exalt client they had to get used to or fix. 
and a lot of people didn't even know that the open beta was existing. Let's be honest though, Flash was a lot better because it has a print feature. Exalt still doesn't have one, shaking my SMH. But as time went on, everyone was making the switch until eventually um, everyone had to, except for the gamers. And of course, around this time, the sad announcement came where Silex was leaving the Decker team. RIP, I'll miss your body. I think Decker's done an amazing job so far, especially with Unity, and I'm looking forward to see what they'll bring in the future. I love you all. Hello guys, it's me Glef back again. Y'all enjoyed Month of the Mad God 2020? Let me just remind you on what happened. The late Month of the Mad God 2020 was to be one of the largest updates the game have had for a really long time. Nine major updates included. Vital Combat, Class Balance, Status Effect Changes, Miscellaneous Balance Changes, Exaltations, Dungeon Reconstruction, The Appetizer, Polish uh, Changes and Drop Rate Changes. And this was also just the first part. Later in September we got Month of the Mad God Part 2, with a new Vault UI, new XP distribution and rumors for high tech terror. With the introduction of Exaltations to 5 dungeons we all had plenty to do to get our Exalted stats. And so even some people got it really early like Cray Killer and Kanishi. Month of the Mad God also ended with an 8 day long Orcs 3 event, first of its kind. We had free runes and a an chest event after the end game boss. This made it possible for people to try this before limited dungeon, and gave some people the first experience with the real bullet hell. Paladin, Mystic, Warrior and Priest all got changes. Most of the abilities got tweaked to work better with vital combat, but what you all probably reacted on was the Puri on group nerf. Sadly Mystic lost its berserk from tiered abilities, but to compensate for that curse got a buff. The update was so huge that if you want to look back on what came, you can read the 48 page document found on reddit. Exaltation is a long awaited goal for players, to play the game and get benefits over time as you do the harder dungeons in the run. With their stats increasing to plus 5 in attack, defense, speed, dexterity, vitality and wisdom, and plus 25 in HP and MP for doing 75 of an exaltation dungeon. You get benefits like more damage for the specific class, drop chance increased over the same weapon classes, and reduced in combat time with the same armor classes. I think this is one of the updates that define the game in 2020. This is something completely new and fresh to run, a good step to get long term benefits for playing the game, and also a reason to play some of the dungeons that got swept, swept under the rug like Lost Halls after the release of O3. And with you doing 75 of one type of dungeons, it grants you good chances to get more of the rare white bags that drops from the locations. With an exclusive skin for every class, now you, you can aim for the ultimate flex on Realmai. A full Realmai page of 16 exalted characters, I wonder who's gonna get that first. Hey guys, Pish here. October brought us the long-awaited Unified Vault update. The main aim of this update was to provide quality of life changes for all players, item filtering by type, searching items by name for quick and easy access. Also, my personal favourite, the addition of the dedicated potions chest. Thanks Decca. Uh, is this thing on? Alright, hey guys, it's Afro here. This year has brought us the endgame dungeon of Realm of the Mad God, Oryx's Sanctuary. With weeks of the community being in turmoil, we as the players started grasping the fight and learning effective ways to conquer the Mad God. Strategies and patterns were found within the Oryx 3 fight, such as phase combos. And eventually more and more information about the fight was figured out and learned by the community. Undeniably, this is the hardest dungeon that the game has ever seen. Oh, with of course the exception of Rainbow Road. To this day, even those who have mastered this dungeon can slip up and die on even the best equipped characters. The release of Oryx's Sanctuary has brought along with it 20 shiny new UTI including some incredibly powerful ones, such as the Genesis spell, Vesture of Duality, and most notably, the Divinity. With this dungeon also brought along four mini-boss fights, being Archbishop Lakarix, Chancellor Dharma, Chief Bezer, and Treasurer Gemsbok, all dropping a UT set matching the theme of their design and a powerful Bard ST. 
August, we got our first taste of what Exalt and the Unity Engine could do for Realms mid-game. That being the Highlands exclusive Ancient Ruins dungeon by Sturkey. And while reconstruction of older content would later become more commonplace, the Ruins predates all of that, making it our first exposure to this kind of potential. Never before had we seen such detailed environments, a variety of set pieces to make each area of the dungeon stand out, while still remaining true to the overarching motif. And it was all done using a beige color palette. It's like making a Van Gogh out of a cardboard box. Truly inspiring work has taken place here. This is a great looking dungeon, and it functions just as well. I look at it as an abyss of demons in Tomb of the Ancients fusion, using quicksand as a lava substitute and a combination of brute-like and stocky meandering desert enemies. Being mid-tier, it's not a very long excursion, but it understands and respects its target audience. With three new UTs, a random potion guaranteed, and a moderately challenging opposition by both bosses and enemies, the Ancient Ruins gives newer players a chance to prove their valor, and veterans a good reason to farm the Highlands, making it a welcome addition to the Realm of the Mad God lineup. 2020 has also brought to us the long-awaited yet also controversial Vital Combat update. I feel like I can say that collectively the community has somewhat warmed up to these changes, despite the initial response. This brought to us a new and effective use for both the Defense and Vitality stat. One of the main reasons this update was so necessary for the growth of the game was to try and push the game out of its group tank Puri and MCL shenanigans that you'd see in large-scale groups of players, and honestly, I feel like this update really hit the nail on the head with this one. As this was the update that also brought along such mechanics as adaptive slash exponential health scaling, collectively, this improved the core gameplay of Realm a ton. Honestly, Realm of the Mad Gods a bullet hell game, right? Sure, it's permadeath, but the fact that there was no penalty for sitting there tanking every shot if you had the right classes was just a bit much. Also, Vital Combat makes playing the game without a pet a lot more viable. The amount of times I've been petless and not realized actually blows my mind. This would be the first thing I'd notice if this was pre-Vital Combat. In summary, Vital Combat allows players who truly want to excel at mechanical skill and gameplay to shine. Hey y'all, Custom Canadian here. Now, during 2020, we know that guy's been focused on the reconstruction of Realm. They announced a ton of changes to the game that a lot of players are looking forward to, such as the new Vault, Exaltation, and Vital Combat, amongst other things. This is also when they announced they'll be updating bosses and dungeons that were in need of some love. The original dungeon that were reworked were mainly beginner dungeons, some of the best dungeons in the game, the fantastic pirate cave, but it did not end there, there was of course more. The forest maze, spider den, snake pit, abyss of demons, and the undead lair were also all reworked on top of the pirate cave to be much more aesthetically pleasing, as well as more enjoyable in both bosses and regular gameplay within the dungeon. The dungeon reworks are helpful to new players as they can learn more about status effects as well as UTs, since they also added new UTs in the Forest Maze, Pyro Cave, and Spider Den. They also gave Speedy upon ability use to the Snake Eye Ring, which players of all levels of the game have grown to love. During the reconstructions, Mummy also finally said goodbye to Flash, rest in peace boys to the good old spaghetti code, we will miss you. We saw the release of a new Court of Oryx dungeon by the name of the High Tech Terror, a Mad Lab follow-up boss encounter with Feral, a giant one-eyed purple octopus, I think? Three new UTs that utilized a new burst shot function, and a ring that defends you until the end of time. The boss arena was one of the largest the court had ever seen, that gave you ample room to try out the newly expanded hexing gimmick, as well as Will Ferrell's new eccentric bag of tricks that include, but are not limited to, a gradual acceleration shot pattern that would speed up the projectiles as they passed, a type of danger we hadn't yet experienced, a laser beam attack that could fully melt a man in seconds, a comical grand total of nine different phases, each adding a new attack, and a cart that terrifies me to this day because I never know where it's going to be, all culminating into what I can only describe as the most playfully chaotic and crazy combination of projectiles the game has seen. Not only did this show us that they could maintain their quality standard of boss design that was set way back in the Puppet Master's Encore, but that they could also innovate with new ideas simultaneously. So, to start off, we have the sewer. The sewer has had quite a bit of changes to make it a bit easier now for newer players no longer having everything hit like a tank and having the passageways be much larger to allow for more room for dodging and rushing. The boss still splits into multiple entities throughout the fight, but its chase phase at the very end is much easier to avoid and much less deadly. Oh, and look, Master Rat is still here sporting the four ninja turtles as well. But this time he's a mini boss and he fires void blade shots at us, meaning us the players are not able to master the void blade quite yet. Oh, and look, I got a power pizza, making this dungeon a very good dungeon for getting feed power early on. And that covers sewers, so next up is Woodlab. The first thing you should be noticing is the dungeon now sports a nice autumn look. 
Although it may look very different, the layout of the dungeon and the enemies are fairly similar still though. But the little towers in each room I do have to say are very cute and they grow slowly and then shoot out different colored shots depending on what kind of effect they're going to do. Now the main differences are going to be coming from the tea room and boss which have been majorly buffed. The tree is no longer playing around, it will completely destroy you if you stay in the colored tiles that are around it. Now the boss though has been completely buffed throughout all of its phases, as you can see Dusty ends up having a nexus and I end up having to use a lot of HP pots even myself. But in turn for adding all the extra difficulty we now get greater pots instead of regular pots. And with that we finally are moving on to sea depths. Now I gotta say Decca did an insane job with making sea depths the scariest dungeon in this game now. There are tons of spiders in all shapes and sizes that will now make arachnophobes quake in their boots. And boy oh boy is nothing more terrifying than seeing a bunch of those spiders run at you. But one thing that hasn't changed much is the tea room, besides the little knight that's uh, hung up in the webs, uh, I, I hope he gets out one day. But the boss, it is much more difficult, you have to kill one egg at a time before you can damage the boss and continuously do this until he's completely dead. Also, don't be like me and almost get rain over right as he's going around the edge. But in turn for all the extra difficulty, you also get greater pots from here, you get greater whiz, greater death, and a mana pot. And with that, that concludes the sewer, the wood lab, and the sea depths rework. Don't you love it? Everyone loves numbers going up, especially for fame. This year we had a huge update regarding fame, something that will play a huge role for a long time to come. EXP rewards increased over all dungeons, balancing fame overall, going to high risk, high reward in terms of fame. Doing harder dungeons generally gives you higher fame now, in some cases you gain over 200 fame for completing a single dungeon. We also got a full reward for fame bonuses, going from just a few to over 400. Now, they are not limiting your gameplay but is enabling you to your certain parts of their game, but in fact increase the variety of gameplay and promote you to play the game normally. We went from running in circles in Godlands to maxing quests, dungeons and enemy kill bonuses such as kill a certain amount of cubes. With this we also had a leaderboard wipe, starting a whole new competition between players. Dimension, a new dungeon that drops from the Cube God, was added on the 16th of December. It was made by the UGC members, also known as the user generated content, meaning that actual players made this dungeon. It is around the difficulty of Lair of Draconis or Ice Cave. It consists of two bosses and a treasure room. The boss fights are very unique and a lot of fun, but normal enemies are often very hard to see, especially the small cubes that charge at you, are sometimes barely visible. This can result in very scuffed situations with your health going down very quickly. With this dungeon there are also three new UT items. A cloak that puts bombs behind you that damage enemies, a seal that slows enemies and a waki that is being a waki. The art design is stunning, easily making it to the top of the most beautiful dungeons in the game. During the holidays we had our favorite orcsmiths making a return with some fun new things. We had our standard calendar of great events including both chess events and 1.5 times XP and loot in various dungeons. The Grinch himself have to make an appearance in a couple of dungeons during this event. Two times event whites also made a return, so everybody get their favorite lovely Raikatanas. And of course, the one that everyone wanted to see, the Oryx Sanctuary being unlocked for free. Inside of the realms, the Keeper made a festive return in the way of the Skeeper, as well as the Appetizer returned as Scent Appetizer, or Scent Appetizer, it's one of those two, don't roast me. The Permafrost Lord, Snowy the Frost God, and Jack Frost were all some festive realm encounters that made their way into the event, and there was many fun presents to find and get goodies from inside the realm. There were some festive and fun weapons released for this season. Deca also released the abilities that are consumables in any of the quick slots instead of having them designated for a certain potion like health or magic. With this, they released the Adventurer's Belt that gives you the ability to have a third quick slot as well. The Cherry on Top is a fun campaign for players to complete for some very good rewards. Thank you Decca for finally giving me a way to get a Colo Sword. Also very much my enjoyment, loot bags that turned to fun presents, oh yeah, and um, item 4 from 3rd Dimension got released. With the 2020 Oryxmas update brought along the heavily anticipated Item Forge update. Using blueprints that are gathered around by grinding various bosses, it allows us to craft the items we've been oh so unlucky grinding for. There are five different types of blueprint. There's Basic, Greater, Superior, Paramount and Exalted. A few items have their own standalone blueprint however. The process is as simple as this. Walk up to the friendly looking NPC and trade off three items as the same rarity as the one you desire. Add some forge fire and a mark specific to the dungeon and there you go. Your very own 3D printed Wakazashi of Eastern Winds. After months of anticipation since the Exalt client launched, 
Backpack trading is now in the game. So now I can do things such as trading from backpacks. <laughs> nice one, Afro. 2020 was also the year when we launched the new Realm uh, Exalt blog right after the Exalt entered the open beta phase back in April. This was the year in which we welcomed close testers from the community to collaborate with us, as well as our beloved content creators, some of which you can hear in this video. To them, and especially to you, Realmer, watching this video, our big, big thank you. And if you think 2020 was a hell of a year for Realm of the Mad God, just wait. <laughs>